Welcome back everyone to the Succession series on Rule the Waves with the Historical Gamer, XTRG, and myself, Tortugo Power. So I'm doing this in an interesting new format. I am doing this while live streaming, so there are plenty of people in the chat <laughs> riding along with us, but uh, I'm still going to do this more or less in the same fashion as I do my other videos. Um, I'll be pointing out interesting comments as we have them. Um, yeah, uh, but mostly we'll just still be pushing forward with the series just you know, the same way we've been doing it. So, there's been a lot of uh, pushing for a new Dreadnought, you say. Well, frankly, I, I agree, and what better way to start off our video than with designing our the first French Dreadnought. So, here we go. Well, auto-design, I already know what I have in mind, and I think it's gonna be uh, something like this. So, I don't know, I, I, I did pay attention here, how much, what is the difference between uh, this aft center line, which is over here, and the aft superimposed, which can both fire directly rear. If I want to do an apple to apple comparison, I know we can't build more than four turrets, but still, this is the uh, what it would look like. That's such a minor difference, right? We're talking about about 75 extra pounds or tons, I should say. Oh, yeah. So okay, you're saying certainly out of our range right now, but eh, that's not. We could do 14 or 15, hmm. And I actually think, I mean, I wish I knew which of these guns it was gonna be quality zero first. And another, I think I, a thing that which I feel is missing from this game is like a, a pressure inside the naval gun field that if you already developed a, a 14 inch quality gun, um, then basically that would be your bigger push for higher quality. If you knew that you were fitting a turrets, 14 inch turrets, you'd probably be pushing for better 14 inch guns. Uh, I think even just the fact that you have, you're using 14 inch guns, it seems to make sense that your people would become better at designing them. You would learn more about them, whatever. So, uh, I don't think that's in the game. So we're left in this situation where I'm just playing, I'm flipping a coin. And I suppose we can do the final determination of the gun caliber based on how much tonnage we really have to work with. So let's first get this thing out uh, as ma what do we have, 29,000 we can get her up to. Yeah, it says right there, if I was looking. So let's just put this at 29,000, and I want a speed of 19. These are things that I feel I, I don't want to compromise on, speed of 19. Uh, I don't want to compromise on 6-inch guns. I want, I prefer... Nine per side, so let's get those in turrets if we can. And we're way overweight, but I have an idea. Well, first of all, I can get rid of one of these guns. Now, are we expecting... What is the advantage of having these superimposed uh, turrets if we don't have superimposed front? Very, very rarely are we actually going to be facing away from... We're, you're usually trying to close. However, there there is the odd situation every now and then where you're retreating, and if you can bring more of your guns to bear than them, you can just they they'll just drift into. Let's see. Actually, that's true. Not a lot of people are going to have front firing superimposed turrets either. So if we were to just have this kind of funky line of breast formation and move away from the enemy fleet if they pursue, we could bring up more guns to, than they can. It's kind of a crazy strategy, and. Um, I'm not trying to think about things in terms of the succession series. I think each admiral should just play as if they're playing the entire length of their career, whatever that is. Un I, we shouldn't, I shouldn't pretend to know that in two more years, two and a half more years, I'll be giving up the, uh, giving up the ghost here. So this strategy that I'm thinking of will require, I mean, anybody in the future, like X tier G, historical gamer, will have to be using the same strategy with these ships. Hmm. Because this is the ship I have in mind, at least. If I, if I delete this, and I'm going to knock down the centerline turrets by one each, and then we can get 15-inch shells here. So we can see that this is all well within the, the structure. I still have the torpedo defense 2 and 19 speed. These are, basically, don't even treat these as variables. Those are absolutes. I will not compromise on those two things. Torpedoes, defense, we need the highest possible because, uh, well, for anybody who's watched my series, we all know that torpedoes end up being the death of me more often than not. 
We can take secondary turrets. We're, I'm not going to defend these turrets very much. We have nine of them, you know, we lose one, okay. We have lost, you know, like 11% of our firepower. That's not that bad. So to me, the extra space, the massive amount of weight saving that we get from that, like, let's just take a look here. We're at two, 1900. We go back up to five, 900. So we're saving a thousand tons by just cutting down on the secondary turrets, which I feel is is important. Now, because these, shit, these middle turrets are not going to be firing at all the angles, um, that's actually worse than I thought. It's only 45. I thought it was 60 degrees. That's good to know. Remember, cross deck fire. I'm not, did I show it on camera? Okay, so I am streaming, like I said, I mentioned, so I'll ask the stream. Um, stream started, by the way. Let's see. It was about like, well, it started a while ago, but this is, video has only been gone, going on for about seven minutes. And I wonder if I showed cross deck fire and the 45 degree angles and all that. I'm curious. Let me know stream if you can. But in the meantime, I'll just keep pushing on with this. So with this extra weight, I guess one of the great things we could do is increase the number of turrets. And we might even try, what, like where is, where is the, where, where's the weight going in these? Oh, eight inch turrets. <laughs> oh, no, no, we're not gonna do that. That would be, that would be silly. So now we're getting 10, we're getting 10, uh, six inch guns per side and conning tower is obviously too low we should get that up to 13 before we even get that up possibly even higher um, belt extended way too high so we can probably cut a little bit of savings there I like my belt extended basically high enough to act as a light cruiser so light cruiser armor which is usually 2.5 well heavy a little bit heavier let's say but I don't think four is necessary how much Wait, are we really talking about here? Well, about 200, a little bit over 200 tons. The difference between three and four, if that's 200 tons, I don't think that that will have a functional difference for us. Yeah, um, there was some mentioning that cross deck fire proved impractical in real life. That's Gary van der Plog. Uh, yeah, this is true, because <laughs> you have these, the, the, the torque, the weird angles, and then shooting, I, I think even like the muzzle blast, wasn't it? that caused big problems. Um, you know, if you aim in certain areas, even though the shell doesn't hit anything, the muzzle blast, like just the amount of disturbance in the air, the percussion or whatever, um, was problematic. I, I think I remember seeing that. Let's see, tur top three at deck, deck 2.5, that's good. Turrets 11 is better. This is looking decent. Okay, yeah, again, I apologize that we have a little bit of noise in the background. That was, this is the reason why I can't record videos during the day. It's uh, frustrating, but uh, I am working on some solutions for that. <laughs> what are we missing in this? Well, while we have the extra weight, I always love getting a couple extra torpedoes. Not that it usually matters, but this is specifically for night battles. If we have um, night battles, then that's the only time our torpedoes will be firing. Hmm. I don't want to spend the entire... Okay, by the way, I, I there was a name up for grabs here, which I want. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Devastation. There it is. <laughs> the Devastation. <laughs> that has got to be the name of this. Uh, this class of ships, of course. Okay, very good. So let's see, what else do we want? I mean, we're dealing with 600 tons. I just don't know how to, oh, well, okay. I do know how we're gonna have to spend a little bit of that. If we're doing 15 inch guns, I'm sure that 110 rounds should be more than enough. Even though central firing means we will lack some of the, I mean, we're expecting a little bit longer engagements because ships aren't gonna be able to sink each other quite as easily, or we might just have to close range a little bit more which means torpedo defense becomes more important again. We might, I, I might just try to cut down on the, the cost of these ships in the end. Um, I'm thinking that maybe if we can get just one more ship or something by cutting down, we can probably drop this, yeah, basically down to 28,000. Let's just take a look at how much we're saving. 3.2 base uh, if we cut down the displacement versus, okay, that's a relatively minor change. Of course, it doesn't 
if we add extra armor and all that, that's where the cost is going to go up again. So 3.2, okay, we can get 9.5, I'm okay with that. Might as well get the conning tower up to 14, because I always like a good, strong, good, strong uh, conning tower. Defend the bridge. Hmm. Well, is that her? Is that her? Uh, yeah, okay, so somebody was mentioning... Oh, I have to do re retrofits to talk about um, the engines. Yeah. I don't know. We have um, a little bit of extra weight here, but... Just barely not enough to do anything substantial with it. I guess I could cut this down. Oops. I could I could also bring it up, but 13 inches... That's really not that much, to me, if I'm being really honest. Oh man, we're gonna have to cut it down to 12 in order to get this to work. Huh. Well, that's less good. Man. Um. Hmm. Could just leave it overweight. I just can't bring myself to bring a coin tower all the way down to 12. What would the captains think? So, why not? Let's, you know, we're only going to design a ship once in this area, so... Look at that. 13.5, 11.5, 9.5, all the half-inch... <laughs> we're using... This is inches, and we're on the metric system over in France anyway, so it doesn't matter. That's it. A devastation. Save and build. So she's an expensive ship. But that's what we've been hoarding our money for, was to get something like this available. So let's kind of see, we have 10 million and we have 136 million in in the bank. How much over our current monthly balance can I go? I think five is a reasonable number. And in fact, I think five may be just like all we build for this class even. Because I have a feeling that at the moment this ship is designed, actually, okay, let's, let's space it out a little bit just in case we get a huge design improvement. I might just design yet another class of ship right away. So we'll start with just three, or, well, I want the monthly balance to go negative. So let's just start with four. It's a good enough sh um, class of ship. I, I just worry that the very next turn, if I get super firing forward turrets, I'm going to be you know, punching myself in the face. But that's how this game goes. <laughs> that's the amazing thing about this time period in general, is that you, you didn't know how to design the ships. So I am very clearly in that boat. Good. So there it is. The Devastation. Devastation, whatever we, I'm sure it's supposed to be some kind of French pronunciation. And let's see, although these names are all fine, I'm going to take this Masena. I'm going to rename this one. This is going to be the Tortoise, because we already have a Tortuga power, but I, I did, I would have preferred to have my namesake in. Actually, I guess that's not very appropriate, that you wouldn't name a ship after yourself, but I regret doing this immediately. I could put it back to Mencena. Okay, let's put it back to Mencena. Let's put it back to Mencena. Good name. Good, but I'm I'm extremely happy with this. The Devastation will be my flagship if we go into any battles. And that's to the point that if... Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry about this noise, but if we happen to have a battle with the Devastation where I am commanding... Now, it's going to take a while for those to get out, right? 30 months... In fact, I realized that in order to get them out, oh, you know what we can do is maybe accelerate one of these guys. Let's get my flagship out ASAP. So that saves three months. You know, is that worth it? Half a million a turn? Yeah. Um, there was a comment asking if I could do an increase um, guns per turret, two guns per turret on the secondaries. But yeah, that does have a 40% penalty for us right now. So really not worth doing quite yet. Oh no, actually it's illegal. We can't. We can do it on battleships, but we can't even do it on um, Dreadnought. So if I wanted to potentially design a new one, if I show you real fast, we do this, it's gonna say, um, we have not developed secondary turrets for Dreadnoughts. So there's that. Okay, good. And um, some, I wanted to also point out something, oops, I don't wanna move this. Uh, the people were asking kind of about rebuilding the engines. Oh, we also do need to upgrade the historical gamers. Those have the old 12 inch guns. I'm just waiting for all those guys to be out, so we need three more months before we can do that. So very, that'll be a, very soon we'll be able to retrofit the historical gamers. But if I'm looking at that real fast, 
Um, if you replace the machinery, it's, it's prohibitively expensive, <laughs> very expensive. You can see the rebuild cost, we do absolutely nothing, it's essentially a fresh coat of paint, it is uh, four, four months at 400 total, 1635. Replacing the machinery jumps up by a factor of 10. Well, at least an order of magnitude, maybe not full, not a full 10, but huge, huge increase. And look at that, 10 months to do it. it takes forever to get them back. So that's the reason why I don't like to replace machinery. The best time to do the replacing of machinery, well, first of all, I don't think it's worth to do it on dreadnoughts, That's a, which is weird, but what it, what is the difference in speed you're really gonna get out of a dreadnought by replacing sh machinery? Does it go from like 19 up to 20, maybe 19 up to 21, if you have like huge improvements? It's relatively minor. I think the best thing to replace machinery on is your battle cruisers, your light cruisers, and probably the armored cruisers will fade off because the battle cruisers become more important, so we may, we may not be using those. Okay, very good. So let's move on to, I guess, progressing the next turn. I guess that's it. Oh, and with a little bit of extra money, let's continue to afford the future larger and larger dock sizes. Did I already do, maybe somebody from the stream, let me know. Did I already do, um, I don't think I showed this on camera, how things are going so far. It's been a while, at least, since my last video recording, and I don't remember. What we see in the scope of the world is, even with my four... Um, dreadnoughts building I'm well that's gonna put us very comfortable with everyone else but already right now the British have five dreadnoughts out 106,000 so we're looking at mm, slightly under 25,000 so that's like 20 uh, let's call it 22,000 per that's a pretty large average size for a dreadnought having already finished this early and in fact this is because they have 33, th their dock size must have been just constantly being boosted by the private industry. Because I think we've, I'm not, I don't remember what the historical gamer was doing with dock size, if he was um, constantly building it or not. I think maybe not constantly, but I know he did it at least once, right? Yet the British are way ahead of everyone. We're at 29 and they're at 33. So they have a huge advantage, although none of their ships actually show that advantage yet. Because if we look at their ships, yeah, they have 20,000 ton. They have two 23,000 tons out. That's that's the nice double tur I really like this configuration. We could have done that with the two rear superimposed, but, um, well, I didn't. <laughs> I, I don't like this one, though, because look at this, 14 three-inch guns as their secondaries. Very strange that they go from 13 inches down to three inches. But I am quite confident, even though we have the same belt, um, if you're wondering, like, how the belt... Uh, how defenses work. I'm pretty sure just having a larger ship. So our 29,000 ship, 29,000 ton ships, those are just going to be harder to sink by merit of them being so big. So even though their belt armor is a little bit lower, they can definitely take a lot more. Okay, good. So let's move on to the next month, finally. <laughs> a revolution in an African country has left some of our nationals stranded. What do we do? Um, let's see, and the, the stream has confirmed that I did not talk about the Almanac very much. Okay, let's see. Uh, we're gonna, Tension Up is the name of the game, right? Ooh, I like it, I like it. We're getting very close to war in Northern Europe. Let's just make sure all our ducks are lined up, ready to go. Ah yeah, we have to get this Gion the heck out of here. You move, well just move anywhere even to the Mediterranean for just get out of Northern Europe for a turn. And let me think about where they're supposed to go. The other guys can stay in Northern Europe. Um, yeah, we're getting some people down to the Indian Ocean. I, off camera, I did all the moving for foreign tonnage. I don't think that's terribly interesting, so. Hmm. Uh, there's a comment that the wing turrets are useless, or in this person's opinion. I, I don't think so. Uh, they're a way to avoid the max centerline turret penalty and still get off a pretty decent ship because if you have them in the front I mean if they're the forward location which we just saw I guess I have to go back to Almanac British ship so if they're in these areas these are guns that are gonna fire more anyway so sometimes you're actually able to run you're able to like completely deplete one of these in ammo and you're real able to spin around and use the other but yeah okay so the ideal is get centerline and that's why we did that because it does save uh, the other thing you could do, which I was 
I, I think I showed this, but um, is you could just do cross deck fire instead. So, but that would, I think that's cheaper, but the angles are worse. Because the angles for those um, wing turrets are better. They have only 30 degrees off the vertical. Okay, so let me just show it again. They only have 30 degrees off the vertical or horizontal in this picture where they can fire. And remember, our centerline turrets get 45. So they can actually start firing sooner than um, your other turrets. So, okay, moving on. One of our cruisers is running around. Wow, tensions, <laughs> we're gonna be at war. <laughs> we're gonna be at war very quickly. One of our cruisers has run aground on the shore of a minor nation while performing an illicit intelligence operation. Wow, well, if they threaten to impound the ship, France will come on down on them like a ton of bricks. We demand that they release the ship and send a strong squadron to underline the point. Now, this, uh... This could be it. Ooh! There it is. <laughs> what? Well, gentlemen... A state of war now exists between France and Germany, which were just uh, five years early, really. The guns of June, they would call this. And I have an unexpected battle I can't avoid, so we'll try to knock this one out real fast. And then I'll probably have to call this uh, stream and this video to an early close, uh, just because this is a, oh my gosh. Okay, that was convoys, but for a second, I had a feeling that that was like a massive fleet. All right, guys, we want you to return. We need to clump up, form our death firing ball. So that is your orders. Max speed, of course. Activate all the things. Okay, and who's our main gun? This is a, oh man, oh man. It had to be the one I wanted the least. Where, where the hell are we? Oh, okay, well that makes sense. This is uh, the Indian Ocean. So I guess it makes sense. So if we're in the Indian Ocean, I suspect that this Gidon is actually the best ship in the seas down here. So we are going to be very aggressive. We're gonna use our light cruisers to take out any escorts, and then we're gonna let, if they have any light cruisers, we're gonna send the Pathu on it. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get into a good firing position. Um, the wind advantage will be theirs unless we can f swing all the way around, and that's gonna, that's gonna take too long to do. But here we go. Okay, Sfax has detached to move independently against a close enemy, very good. But don't worry too much about it, Sfax, your close enemy that you're referring to is actually probably just a destroyer. Nonetheless, oh, these are the Sfax classes though. So they're not, not the best of ships. In fact, I think these guys were destined for Southeast Asia, if I'm not mistaken, and they were caught in this battle. They're caught in the transition. <laughs> so, hmm. But nonetheless, let's let's go. I. Oh dear. Well, well, well. Well, blood will be spilled today. They have nine-inch guns and ten seven. Good lord. Okay, well, about us having the best ship on the water here, that is absolutely not true. We can just take a look at the tonnage. I'm sure theirs is... No, that's comparable to ours. But this is just a really poorly designed ship. We actually outweigh them. We have better armor, but it'd be two 9-inch guns and five 7-inch guns against, well, three 7-inch guns. So our first action of the war is probably going to be a very disappointing one to the French. I believe we're going to actually just um, turn around in this battle. Uh, we don't want to risk an early PR defeat. So what we're going to do is, out of the generosity of our hearts, we're not going to engage merchant ships. Despite the Sean and Cole, uh, that whole thing was just a, a ruse. We don't actually want to raid, do merchant raiding. So you've misunderstood our grand plan was actually all along just to do high fleet high seas fleet battles we could definitely sink this destroyer so if that can get the heavy cruiser into a position where out of position enough that we can go in and maybe snipe a destroyer that would be enough to turn the tide in our favor okay here's our true day class so this is the five inch guns also if we can get to the edges and I, I really don't know how we're gonna do this We're just outmatched. Okay, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to risk it. I will not risk it. 
This ship just so outclasses us. Five seven inch guns. It's a really weird design. And it's the sad thing is it's really poor against destroyers, but we don't have any destroyers in this fight. And this, okay, first of all, it's an old German. That means they haven't retrofitted their designs. They haven't done the retrofits to keep. So they they will have a performance hit. I think the crews are a little bit worse off when they have an old ship. And we did all our retrofitting, so we should have... That means they're probably on central rangefinder, and we are under central firing. But neither is our crew quality good. I guess this guy's just average. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm not going to risk it. I think we're going to have much better engagements we can take. So in this one, we're just going to steam off. Now, if they per wait, if they pursue, we might have to turn around. We could isolate. Hmm. Because we could button hook right now and go right at him. If he's alone. Wow, so loud. I really wish <laughs> it wouldn't scream like that. Uh, let's see. It's the debatable. I'm actually running out of time for my stream anyway, which could influence my decision. That's probably a destroyer in pursuit. If they have even one other heavy cruiser, or even one other light cruiser, uh, it's not a good decision for us to, to button hook and dive back in on them. Yeah, okay, they're turning around. Let's. This will be... Actually, well, in a weird way, let's get these guys... To go to AI control, don't be independent once you core. No, no. Huh, interesting. Can I? I don't think I can make you core to the heavy cruiser, can you? Can I? Oh, this is the heavy cruiser. I don't. You are independent. Very good. You are screen line head. Let's turn you to support line head as well. AI control. Get these guys to AI control just so I don't have to worry about too many ships at the same time. And what we're going to do is kind of steam over here. And see if we can pick off maybe a, an errant minesweeper or something like that. We know that the convoy's over there, but if they've left their port relatively undefended, then maybe we can get away with uh, a quick pick off of some kind of ship. Just to give us, we're supposed to sink two transports. Aha! And look at this. <laughs> maybe. What are you? A transport! Alright, we'll take it. No, we don't need to pick up survivors. He's right next to port anyway. I don't think it's that poor of uh, in the rules of engagement if we just let him. Their lifeboats will reach shore, really. They could probably swim for it. Okay, so we got one. This will be a defeat for us if we don't pick off another, so let's go back around for another pass. That was quite convenient. Maybe we can steal one more. Um, that's not going to be what we are looking for. Okay, we apparently this convoy is headed for um, this port. We've now stumbled back into them. That's okay. We will quickly peel away again. He hasn't gotten the news yet that we actually already sank one. So, although he's pursuing aggressively, if they start landing sh shells, two nine inch guns, it's possible. There's another weird thing we could do is draw the, the heavy cruiser out to fire a whole lot and eventually he'll run out of nine inch shells. But no, that's probably all we're gonna be able to do. All right. Um, with the with nightfall, it's gonna be very difficult. Actually, hmm. Let's see. Okay, it's over. Well, it's gonna be a marginal victory for the Brit uh, Germans. That's okay. It's this is so minor though. <laughs> you don't have to worry about this. We failed this. Unfortunately, we couldn't find another. Uh, couldn't find another. What did they have out? So they did. They did have two heavy cruisers. I'm very glad we didn't go in. 
And they also had a light cruiser, which is a decent one. Ugh. Actually, this is a really decent one. They are using Central Range Finder. Let's just take that information and put it in our back pocket for now. We are using Central Firing. I'm very glad we got all those up updates in and their destroyers. Nothing we can't handle, I think. Same class? Yes. Okay. Well, very good. So it's not going to be a, a, a victory for us, obviously, but did they have... Yeah. Okay. We made a good decision. Two heavy cruisers and one light cruiser. They would have picked us apart. Okay. Well, uh, that is... That's that. <laughs> All right. Well, this is actually going to call this episode to a, a quick close. Um, I, I don't have enough time to do another episode right now. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for War with Germany. And we'll also be keeping an eye in the back of our, and as a low priority, I'll be keeping an eye on our, the progress of our Dreadnoughts construction. So, but anyways, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.